Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about the content type header. Um, so basically the content type header is part of the HTTP protocol and it tells the receiving machine, which can be a client or a server, what type of data to expect and how to actually interpret it. So for example, when your browser makes a request to the server to receive a web page, um, that content that the server returns could be HTML, it could be CSS, it could be JavaScript, whatever it is, it's part of the response body data. And that data right there can be anything. So the actual web browser doesn't know what kind of data to expect when the response comes through. So that's why the content type header is included in the web server response, which tells the browser, hey, going, this right here, this data, is actually JavaScript or could be images or could be HTML, whatever it is. So um, the content type header is basically an indication that the receiving machine receives to tell it what kind of data um, the body data is. Um, so from there, if the, um, if the browser sees JavaScript, it knows to take this content and run it as JavaScript. Um, so, with this being said, the file extension alone is not really enough. So, this means you might make a request to a, uh, to a, to a resource which says, you know, script.js, but that .js part isn't enough for the browser to know this is actually JavaScript. So, it could be enough, but the combination of the content type header and the file extension both combined is good enough for the browser to make a reasonable guess. Um, so, as you can imagine, it plays an important role in the browser sending a request to the server. Um, but it can also be used when the browser um, sends data to the server. So, for example, in an HTML form, if you set the enc type to multi-part slash form data to upload some files, the content type on that request is going to be multi-part slash form data. That way, when the server receives that request, it's going to know, okay, this data right here is going to be a file. So you can do some cool tricks with this content type header. So let's see an example of it actually in action. Um, so here we have an index.php page, sorry, file at this URL. So in the actual text editor, it looks like this. Okay, so let's return some JSON from this PHP file. Let's first create a new array um, with a few key value pairs. For example, we can say name is Dom. We can say age can be, I don't know, 46 and occupation can be a web developer. Okay, so we have this array right here defined in PHP. So as PHP is a server-side language, you can actually set the content type header in your PHP code. But for now, let's just echo this data as JSON. So I'm going to say echo, use the JSON encode PHP function and pass AWR the array inside here. So now this will be encoded as JSON. So I can save this and refresh my browser and we get this right here. Okay. So, in the Network tab of the Chrome Developer Tools, in the, um, in the resource for the document, we can open this up and we get some response headers. So, we see here, response headers, content type, text, slash, HTML. So, by default, the server, which is Apache, has sent the, uh, has sent the content type as being text, HTML, um, by default. So we can change that using um, PHP. All right, so let's make that application slash JSON so the browser knows this is JSON. So back inside here, let's set the content type header using the PHP header function. I can put content type like that and say application slash JSON, uh, sorry, application slash JSON. Okay, so I can save this now. And by the way, this right here is the standard JSON content type, so um, or the MIME type. So I can save this and refresh, and now watch the font 
of this um, of this text. Refresh, and it changes to a monospace font. That is Chrome's way of interpreting the JSON data. It will change it to monospace. That's because it saw it saw the content type as application slash JSON. All right. In Firefox, let's see what happens. So let's just get rid of the content type up here and back to normal and save and refresh and we get the old Times New Roman font. In Firefox, let's refresh, we get that, right? Same thing. Let's change the content type header back to application slash JSON. Let's save this and refresh Firefox and we get this. Firefox gives you this full on interface with headers, it gives you, once again, right there, right? Raw data, headers, JSON, full on like interactive UI just for um, the content type of JSON. So you can see right there, it's obviously, you know, um, an important part of the HTTP protocol. Um, so that is the basics of the content type header. Let's see an example of one of these cool tricks. All right, so let's use an index.php file now, the same one, to actually return some CSS. All right, so let's use this document right here as the HTML for this example. All right, so um, let's go inside here and add a CSS link. Right, link rel um, CSS. Let's make this um, index .php. So let's let's refer that to this file right here. I can save this and refresh, and in the um, console we might get a message. Do we? Yeah, we do. So we see here, resource interpreted as style sheet, but transferred with MIME type application slash JSON. So right now, it's receiving JSON. Hold on, JSON right here as the response. Let's change this to CSS. Back inside here. Let's just um, remove this header real quick and instead let's echo some CSS. We can say, for example, body and say um, background color as being blue. Okay, let's save this and refresh and we get that. All right, so we're using PHP to echo some CSS but the file extension is .php. And that's what I said, that the file extension alone is not enough to determine the content type. Um, so let's actually go back inside the console and we see it says the response type has been, sorry, the uh, content type, sorry, has been text slash HTML. All right, let's change this to text slash CSS. Text slash CSS like that. That is the MIME type for CSS. Let's save and refresh and now we don't get that warning. So the browser has fully interpreted this index.php file as being CSS. It has no idea it's a PHP extension. So that right there is the whole point of the content type header. The extension alone is not enough and you're not limited by the extension to, you know, um, determine the type of data. Um, so you might see in your web server configuration, you might see things like, okay, when you receive the MIME type of text slash CSS, then um, it's going to, sorry, when the server um, uh, serves a CSS file, right, then it will send back a content type of text slash CSS. So this sort of thing can be found in your web server configuration. That's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.